there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got some fun DIYs for you today I also have a sweet friend who's joining me and I'll share those details with you a little bit later so what are we waiting for let's get started today we'll be working with Christ is risen Easter home decor so let's get started with project number one for this project, I am using a kit, yes, another wood kit, spectacular wood kit from craftingwithkimber.com. Now, this does come in two sizes. I'm working with a 12-inch size circle, but it does come with a 15-inch uh, size circle. And I wanted something like this, so I kind of envisioned it up, and Kim and I worked on it together, and this is what we came up with. I love it. Um, I love how the letters stack on top, kind of giving it a 3D look. I think you're going to love it. I'll be using a couple more pieces from craftingwithkimber.com with this project, but I'll have the links to all the product I worked on this down in my description box below. So for this sign, first thing I wanted to do is I kind of wanted like a two-tone, and so I taped off about the top third. I'm going to use Waverly Antique Wax. I mix it with water, and Debbie's Design Diary DIY uh, Little Black Dress of Chalk Paint. I'm mixing that with water as well because I kind of want it more of a stained look, not just pure black paint. Um, I end up mixing a little too much water in it, and so when I go to sand it off camera, it almost gets like a gray tone, you know, the distressing part of it, so I had to come back in and kind of do another coat on the top, so just kind of be cautious of that. If you don't mind a more of a gray tone, you know, the more water and then you go distress it, a little more gray it's going to look after you've distressed it, but um, once I got that second coat on there and went back out and distressed it, I like how it turned out. I'm also just kind of to finish off the back, I'm just kind of staining the back as well, looks really good. This turned out just how I hoped that it would. Once that's all dry, I'm going to go ahead and move the tape down to the lower portion. You can see here it's a little bit uh, on the gray side, but I go in and darken that up a little bit. You can see how that bottom is that gray tone that I was talking about, but I go, like I said, go in, darken it up a little bit. looks a little more blacker. And then, of course, Waverly Antique Wax mixed with water, doing the stain on the top. I love this board, too, because Kim is also placed in those nice little score lines for us to kind of give us that shiplap look. I'm also coming in with this Waverly Antique Wax, mixed with water, of course, and they're staining up my letters and my cross. I really wanted this just kind of that nice, kind of muted farmhouse two-tone look, uh, and I think I achieved that with, you know, what I was going for. I'm going to use Dixie Belle Chalk Paint Any Color Drop Cloth, as well as Dixie Belle Chalk Paint Any Color Rustic Red. I'm bringing in some more product. This is... Uh, hearts they're coming in a set of 12 little mini hearts from craftingwithkimber.com and then i also come in later with uh one other bigger heart which i think comes in a set of four again i'll have those links down below painted those in the red color the hearts in the red and then i'm using that drop cloth i kind of mixed it with water as well so it wasn't full strength paint just more kind of like a stain so you see a little bit of that wood tone uh coming through on our happy word and that way, when I go to distress everything, it just looks like mm, perfection. Love how this turned out. Can I say that enough times for you? Distress everything off camera, showing my sandpaper, although I do use an electric sander because that's just a tad bit easier. And now I'm coming in just, I've got the bottom part of my sign covered with paper. I'm just coming in on the Waverly Wax stained areas. I've that drop cloth mixed with water, put my fan brush in it tap off the excess and then I'm just splattering that and my hearts. Now you can see the bigger heart and the two small hearts I'm going to use. I'm going to use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today to go ahead and attach my uh, elements to the sign itself. You could use super glue, you could use wood glue, uh, whatever works best for you. I have no problems with the Fabri-Tac glue. It's going to hold just as good as super glue. But yeah, I love how these are kind of 3D elements. It just really makes it pop up off of those stained areas. Love, love, love. Getting the rest of our happy word on here. Perfectly wonderful. And then I'm going to get the little hearts. I'm going to put one beside left of happy and one to the right of the Easter word. And then this is, says, a pretty beautiful thing. It's just from a sticker pack, you know, scrapbooking section like Hobby Lobby or whatever. And I'm gluing it onto some really thin cardboard, almost like cereal cardboard. And yes, I can put that through my sewing machine. But I'm doing that so that the sticker is a, a little bit more uh, stable. 
And then I will actually use another piece of thicker cardboard underneath to kind of raise it up off the sign. But I, you know, not thicker cardboard, but this thin type cereal cardboard runs perfectly through my sewing machine. And, you know, I only just use the sewing machine just really for crafts and stuff. So uh, I'm not worried about, you know, messing up my machine or anything like that. It's an El Cheapy $50 sewing machine. Uh, so it works wonderful. Using the open end of my scissor blades, just going to scrape along the edges of that sticker so that it's a little bit rustic. And this is some uh, ribbon I got from Walmart. And I've just kind of got it into a bow. And I'm using a zip tie from Dollar Tree just to uh, keep it into position here. Perfect. And that zip tie will get covered because uh, I will off camera, I use a little bit more of this ribbon and kind of cover around the top and bottom ends of that bow. And then uh, I'll use the big heart over the center. This is just some box trim greenery I picked up at was it Walmart or another local store, putting that in there and then gluing with hot glue. You guys know I rarely get out my hot glue, but I did for this. Putting that bow in the center there and then I'm gluing my heart right over that. Off cameras where I'll cover the top and bottom of that bow so you don't see any of that zip tie from any angle. And then I'm going to place my little quote down below the cross. And that makes this project complete. So let's see who I am joining in with today. Today I am part of a Christ is Risen open challenge inspired by my sweet friend Favi who is Arrows DIY here on YouTube and I'm excited that she asked me to be co-host of this challenge. I just love participating in home decor DIYs you know that show the true meaning of Easter. There's going to be a playlist down in my description box with tons of DIY inspiration from all those who've decided to join in this challenge. Make sure you check out that link and I'll also have the link of course to Fabi's channel in my description box stop over say hello let her know I sent you thank you Fabi for asking me to co-host with you today with that said let's move on to project number two for this project, I'm going to be using this vine basket. I got it from Hobby Lobby like half off. So, you know, $5, not terrible. And you can see how long ago I got it, about two years ago. I'm going to be using this wood slice from Dollar Tree as well as this wood cross, although I do change to a different shape of a wood cross. Um, and using these from Dollar Tree. And then I just picked up some uh, lambs here from Walmart and then some of these other florals from another local store around here. So really any kind of florals and things you want to work with. I love the look of these flowers. So I'm going to use these, um, you know, and I'll bring in some more like box trim and that kind of stuff. First thing I'm going to do is I traced this wood shape onto some paper. And what I want to do is come in and just about oh a quarter of an inch in, I'm going to redraw the perimeter of that wood shape. Because I do want to add some paper to the front of the wood just to, you know, bring it in and make it a little bit more warming or warmth, I guess. And once I kind of retrace and draw that new pattern, I'm going to cut that out. And then it's going to allow a little bit of that wood perimeter of that wood slice to show as you see here. And I like that. So for this cross, just kind of back and forth and it pops right out. And then, okay, so my flowers, I'm not a flower arranger. And I probably spent a half hour off camera just to get it into this cute little ensemble. I tried to do what my cousin says, taller stuff to the back, you know, going down in size, that kind of thing. I added in some box trim. And <laughs> anyway, sorry I did it off camera, but I'm not going to show you my imperfect uh, 
not so expertise flower arranging i did the best i could you do you and make it beautiful and just going to use some zip ties from dollar tree and i use a couple of them to get everything into shape you know where i want it so it stays there and i don't have to try and rearrange it again but i do add a little bit more to it coming up as we use that basket um so now what i'm doing is taking this paper and taking it to my sewing machine and sewing around the perimeter of it using like a size 10 needle my stitch link set on four tension set on four just sew on it like it's regular fabric if you're not a sewer you could use like a sharpie marker or something and make little dash lines around the edge perfectly cute so here you can see my different shape cross i did also get this at dollar tree i'm bringing in that waverly antique wax mixed with water again just to give it a stain and i'll do the same thing on my wood slice and then again off camera because i don't know i just don't feel the need to show you i'm sanding a lot of stuff I just use my electric sander and sand and distress it all. I'm doing the back of the wood slice too, just so that it looks finished off if for some reason you can see it from the back side. It does get a little bit darker here, but you know, I sand that off and make it look nice and there now you know the whole story. <laughs> so for this, because he first loved us is my quote. I'm using vinyl to put this on to my paper. Yes, I will have a link to my blog for free printables used in all our projects today so that you could either use the PNG if you have electronic cutting machine, clean out the background, the center of your letters and cut it out in vinyl or the PDF and you can print it out onto your paper first and then cut it to fit your little sign. Okay, once my vinyl is on there, I'm using the open end of my scissor blades and scraping along the edges, kind of rough it up. You can see I've kind of distressed my wood slice there a little bit, and we're going to glue it with my Fabri-Tac glue right in the center. I'm going to bring in some more splatters again, just like we did on the last project, the drop cloth mixed with water, fan brush, dip it into that watered down paint, wipe off the excess and tap the fan brush, and it gives me nice controlled splatters at least. So I'm adding some glue here and I'm taking some of this moss that I love that I get from Walmart and I'm moving it around all that stem of those flowers so it kind of hides it. And then I'm tucking some of that moss inside my basket. Now I love this moss because it is a moisture moss. I get it from Walmart um, and it has sticks and leaves and everything in it, but it's really, it's not that dried out stuff you get from Dollar Tree. I don't like it. So I get everything inside the basket. I tuck more moss in and around the sides and around the back to cover up all those stems and everything get it exactly how I want it and then I'm going to tuck my cross in just kind of I glue it in off camera a little bit but could just kind of tuck it in among the flowers there bring in a little bit more box trim get that arranged and looking nice how I want it and then I go ahead and cut the rope kind of in the center on that sign there so that I could wrap it around the top edge of that basket and then like you know tie it into the basket and I also glue it underneath that slice to the top of the basket as well so it doesn't move but I thought kind of cutting in half and then wrapping it around the rim of that basket and then tying it in a knot would you know help keep it in place but a little extra security gluing it underneath and I'll just kind of cut off the excess in uh, tuck the ends in and then once I do that that makes this beautiful easy project complete Let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, I'm gonna use this wood piece from Dollar Tree, and then I have a bunch of these like slat boards my friend Kim gave me. You could use a whole piece of wood or a wood sign from Dollar Tree. What I'm gonna do is just take this and like kind of cut those ends off there 
and ends off there. So I have two sizes of wood tags. So this is what it looks like. I went ahead and used the brown one. You can see here as I put it on top, I just had my husband kind of cut those ends off a little bit. And then you can see how this one looks. And if you don't have, like Dollar Tree doesn't have these, if it has this, uh, you know, wood piece at Dollar Tree, you can just kind of cut off the end. These are new in at Dollar Tree. You can make this into a wood tag. If you have these from other holidays signs, this is perfect. It's already a tag shape. You can just kind of cut the bottom off. You can use cardboard. You can use foam board, just basically whatever you have. I'm going to use this wood glue here and just kind of get my uh, sign together. Yeah, it's kind of a shame because usually when I use little slat boards like this, I make it so you can see the slats in it. But in this particular case, you don't really see them. But, you know, I want to use the wood up. I've got it. It was free. Thank you, Miss Kim. So wood gluing my large tag together. And on both of my tags, I'm just going to show you on this one. I'm going to go ahead and trace around the tag, the main shape. And then I'm going to cut it about a quarter inch smaller all the way around. Just kind of like we did on the wood slice, okay? So showing how I did that. And I love this paper cutter um, because it, ha it shows you exactly where you're going to cut. If you look in between in the center of those plastic guidelines there, there's a little piece of wire. And that wire is exactly where your paper is going to cut. So you don't have to guess. So when I lay this cardstock onto the wood tag, you can see that wood perimeter around it, right? And then I'm going to use that pattern to come in and do my second layer of cardstock. And then I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter all the way around. So I trace that first layer of cardstock onto my second layer and then cut it short about a quarter inch, like I said, all the way around. So when all the pieces are together, you see a little bit of each layer down below around the edges, just like that. So for the little hole at the top of both tags, you could use like a wood circle and drill a hole in it. Just some ideas here. You could use like metal washers here, which I've used plenty of times when we've made tags in the past here. I found this at Goodwill, but I know Hobby Lobby has bags of them, and I asked my husband just kind of cut it directly in half, so now I have two, and I'll use one of these for each tag for that little opening to give a little design element. So for the top of this tag, I wanted to kind of elevate where the quote was going to go, so I have this sign from Dollar Tree. You could use foam board or a piece of cardboard if you want. I'm just taking the metal and the glue off of that, and I'll use Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Gravel Road for both of our tags, and in this Debbie's Design Diary DIY chalk paint, also Gravel Road, but of course, two totally different colors, so basically a dark and a lighter color gray. And for both tags, because this is like a set, a larger tag and a smaller tag, of course, I'll start with the dark gray on the bottom, uh, layer the papers up, and then the square sign that will go in the center of our tags will have the lighter gray with the quote and the papers layering up on top of that. So, of course, here's my lighter gray on the square sign, and it's probably going to be easier to watch than to listen to me talk. <laughs> And then I paint my little circle here that our twine's going to go through, although I end up painting it a different color off camera. The light's too light. Paint it like a medium gray off camera. Painting the other little tags set now. The lighter gray on our little square board. Now these are those crafter square. You get five or six in a pack of the square boards. And then I'll go ahead and move on to the smaller wood tag now, coming back in with that dark gray. So remember, dark gray on our wood tags and then a lighter gray on the square boards that are going to go in the center of that. And then, of course, once everything's done and painted, I will distress those, sand them off camera. I wanted both of these signs to have just a slight difference in how they look, but the same kind of color palette so they would look nice in any vignettes that you put them in but go together. So the bottom tag, this is how we're going to layer everything. And I just brought in some other colors I wanted to work with, like teals and aquas, some other gray tones. And I just took a few... The paper size doesn't really matter. I just kind of cut them to fit so I could layer them and kind of lay them cattywampus. A little quote I cut from a piece of paper. You could use like a sticker quote. Lay the square sign on top and then feature my other two colors of cardstock. Now, this is the printable free, of course, for the top of this sign. Yes, I designed and developed this. I love how it turned out. I will have a PNG if you want to clean it out and cut it in vinyl or an I used the PDF and just printed it right onto my cardstock and then cut my cardstock to fit the sign. So that works wonderfully and I think it looks beautiful. So now I'm coming in and all my papers for both tags, I'm going to sew around the edges. Again, if you're not a sewer, just, you know, like a Sharpie marker or if you want that sewn look and just make little dash lines, okay? 
but I love the look of the sewing. I just think it gives it, see, just this nice, soft, subtle look. I'm crooked with it. I don't care. I'm using a white thread on this. So I think it looks good. It'll shine a little bit, but not be, you know, too in your face. And then once everything's done, this is what it looks like with all the sewing on it. I know there's a little S on that printable there. You'll see why in a minute. Of course, I'll erase that. And then I've got all my paper sewn for my little tag. You can see, again, I've got all these just little pieces of paper, so it kind of matches the top. So here's my little tag, how I'm going to layer it, just like the other one, except it's just a little bit different position. And then here is the printable for this one, Saved by Grace. Again, I just used the PDF, and I downloaded it and used my Microsoft Publisher and printed it out on my cardstock and cut my cardstock to fit the front of that darker gray uh, piece that's going to go underneath it. Now I'm using the open end of my scissor blades here and you can see how I scrape along the edges to give it a little bit of texture here. So if you're not a sewer, this is a great way to add texture. And doing this allows each piece to kind of pop up from the piece below it. Put these two together. You can see here, see how that one kind of pops up off of that bottom layer? So that's why I like to do this. I think it's nice. Here's another little uh, word quote I cut out of. It was like a big piece of paper with a bunch of different quotes and stuff on it. And I just kind of cut out what I wanted that I thought went great with the printable that's on top. I love this paper. I wanted to show you. This is from Prima Marketing. It's called Zella Teal Paper Pad. Now, this is a 6x6 size. I did find a link. I usually use 12x12. 12 12. I did find a link from Walmart. I'll put down below if you like this. It's double-sided paper. Um, some of it's kind of like, eh, but I love the colors when you get like to here with the kind of the teals and the browns and things like that. I tend to go toward Prima Marketing paper. A lot of people ask me that because it's a little bit thicker than just the plain, you know, open stock paper you get at uh, like Hobby Lobby. Um, I love to use it. Sews on very well, that kind of thing. So um, like I said, I found it at Walmart. I don't know how many they have in stock, but I'll have that link down below for you. So just finishing up, distressing the edges. And here's what that little S was about on my papers. It was just telling me a note to myself which papers I wanted to splatter. So on each tag, I chose a larger layer and then the printable layer that I'm splattering a little bit. You don't want splatter over all of them. It'd be too busy and in your face, but just a couple pieces to splatter a little bit. So back to the big tag, I'm going to put my two larger pieces of cardstock together. And before I glue those onto the board, I need to mark where that one circle is, right? We want to cut that out because we, you know, our, our rope or twine needs to go through that circle. <laughs> Once we cut that out, then we'll go ahead and glue this little cardstock ensemble to the wood part here, the wood part of our tag, matching up our holes. We'll go ahead and get our all our layers of paper into place. Yeah, I just love how this quote turned out. I uh, had fun designing it. And I'm just kind of using my larger sign to kind of see where it's going to lay and where I kind of want to stack and twist and turn the couple of layers of paper below it. But I just, I just really do love how it turned out. And I love to add like this says, I will never forget, which is basically I'll never forget the love story of how Jesus hung on the cross because of his love for us. So that's how I kind of took that quote to make it work with the printable I made. Glue on our little circle at the top, and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for our smaller tag. Marking our circle and cutting it out of the cardstock before we glue it down so everything lines up. And then we'll go ahead and get, you know, our cardstock onto our main tag on top and our printable here, saved by grace. And then using that to see where I want to layer the paper underneath. And you don't have to layer any paper underneath. You could just do the bottom cardstock and the sign on top if you want. This uh, little quote, I will always remember this day when we were saved by grace. So I tie those in together, glue down our little wood circle where the rope will go through. All right, and then I'm just using some rope I picked up at Walmart in the sewing section. I would not have thought of that, but they've got some different things of rope there. So I just kind of weeded it through there and, and then grabbing both ends and bringing it through the loop, right, as you can see here. And then I take both of those ends together and just tie it in a little knot. That's how I did both sides, nice and easy. And then I've got some of this uh, ribbon. I can't remember where I got it from, wired ribbon. I was going to use the same ribbon on both and then decided not to, so I'm going to use the plaid. This is a gray plaid on the smaller tag. Cut it how I want. All I did was just tie it in a single knot, and then I'm using a plain 
gray on the larger tag. So they go together, but they're different. Again, those subtle differences that sets them apart, but keeps it together. Once I adjust the tails on this tag, that makes this project complete. So I hope you enjoyed the projects I came up with today for this Christ is Risen Easter DIY video. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. Also, please give this video a thumbs up because it really, really, really helps my channel to grow. And boy, do I want it to grow. <laughs> if you wandered in here for the first time and you're checking things out, maybe you came over from Fabby's channel or maybe you came over from one of the other talented crafters who are participating in this challenge. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad to have you here, but make sure before you click off, if you like what you saw here today, that you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Thank you again, my sweet friend, Favi, for asking me to co-host this challenge with you. It certainly has been a pleasure. Remember, everybody, I will have a playlist link in the description box. You can go get lots of Christ is Risen DIY inspiration for yourself today. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Whatever situation you are facing right now, maybe you fear you won't see the sun again. Maybe you feel you've fallen into that deep, dark pit. You don't understand why it's happening, but, child, God has a different path of redeeming grace for you. He will stand in the fire with you. He will calm your storm. He will allow the sun to shine for you. He will walk you through the desert. He will bring you up out of that pit, and He will part the sea for you to walk through on dry land. Now, this time may feel long for you, but God is doing things on time. He's developing His plan into action on time. Sometimes it may take an extra moment as He weaves all the threads into place, but I promise you, He's working in this chaos and confusion for you. He's working on this pain and darkness for you. And he's using all this to accomplish his best will for your life. It may feel a bit messy right now, and, and maybe it's getting a little hard to breathe, but you have to keep believing and holding on to hope. Hang on to God's presence. You carry God in you. Be encouraged with his love of your body, mind, and soul. He will work all things together for his glory. He knows exactly what you need. Perhaps he understands there's something you need to learn to be able to get through this. Hang on to the life-giving flow of what Jesus will show you. Remember, it took Noah 120 years to get through the plan God had him working through. He did not give up, even when people probably thought he had a screw loose. He knew God had a plan. He waited, he prayed, he built, he achieved, and he survived. You too will survive. You have the very power of God to lean on. Allow him to weave this tapestry of new life into a plan he's drawn up for you. Hold on to his redeeming grace of hope for this new day. Feel the light of warmth of his spirit around your soul as you face tomorrow. You've got this because you have God in you and with you, and he will never leave you. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.